we're going to get started. I know you're excited and this is going to be how to buy your first rental property. I've been talking about this for months and y'all know that I absolutely love real estate. And so, yes, I am completely excited that you're here with me tonight and I hope you're excited too. This first page will tell you, this is my name. I am the broker for Whitney Buys Houses. I'm the auctioneer. This is a picture of me. Ashley is my lovely assistant. She's here with me tonight also, and she took this picture last week. Uh, we went and got to go hang out at the park one afternoon while the rest of y'all were at work. <laughs> so I am the broker. I am an auctioneer, but most importantly, I am an investor and a real estate mentor, and that is why you're here with me today. You want to know how to start your rental portfolio because it's completely overwhelming and you just don't know what to do. You don't know how to get started and that's what I'm here for. So let me tell you how I got started, why I'm a real estate genius and why you need to be listening to me. Okay. I did my first flip in 2009 and it's actually the house that we are sitting in right now. I flipped it, decided I liked it, wanted to keep it and so I moved in. Didn't make any money on that, but I did learn a whole lot of lessons. So life went on. I had a regular job. I was working for my mom and the family company, and it just wasn't very exciting anymore. But my life got really weird in 2012 and 2013 where it just clicked in my brain. You know what? I can't do this for the rest of my life. Like, I am meant for bigger and better things. There's other things that I want to do, and going sitting at a desk somewhere for eight hours a day every day for the rest of my life like please shoot me or give me something else to do <laughs> like this just isn't gonna happen I can't live like this and that's when it got weird I started buying houses with no plan no formulas no nothing and I made a ton of mistakes in 2012 and 2013 then in 2014 I got my act together, I had a plan, I had a strategy, I'd taken some classes very similar to what you're listening to right now, and it changed my life, and I'm just going to tell you all that I made a shit ton of money in 2014, and I've got some examples of how I did that coming up in just a couple slides, so hang out with me for a second. Then in 2015, I managed to flip six houses, I did about 10 other deals, again, made a whole lot of money, had a lot of fun, and got married, I basically took October, November, and December off from life and didn't do squat for three months. When's the last time you took three months of the year off and didn't have to work? Because I did it last year. It was awesome. So this year, I'm still buying houses. I flipped three houses in October. I hadn't flipped anything all year, and then suddenly in October, I'm flipping three houses. It was awesome. It was like getting my wings back on. <laughs> But what I've been doing this year is teaching ladies, and I've recently started teaching men, how they can get started in real estate, how they can become this real estate rock star and get their life together, which is what I did a couple of years ago, and I haven't looked back since. So yes, I've been buying, yes, I've been flipping, but I've mostly focused on being a mentor and passing on my knowledge to you. I also want to tell you that I don't know if you know me in real life or not, or if this is your first experience with me, but I like to think that I'm not a slimy used car salesman. I mean, look at me. I'm not the kind of guy that's going to be wearing a tweed jacket, standing up in front of the room on a Saturday, telling you that you need to up your credit limit and we're going to do some amazing things, when really that dude wouldn't know a deal if it was slapped across his face. What he knows how to do is still a program. And he's probably a lot more techie than I am. So if I make a techie mistake here later, y'all forgive me on that. I'm a real estate genius, not a tech guru. <laughs> okay, so I want you to be a success. I want you to be a freaking rock star. I want you to retire early. I want you to make the residual income that you deserve. I want you to live your life on your own terms and not have to answer to anybody else. Even if you're a small business owner or you're already an entrepreneur or you're a real estate agent and you think you don't answer to anybody else, go ahead and ask yourself how many times you answer the phone on a Saturday. How many times you check your email like it's crack and you need your fix for the day. Like you are working for somebody else. Whether it's a big paying client or a boss, you're working for somebody else. 
and you need to spend more time with your kids. You need to enjoy your kids. You need to buy that beach house and you need to pay for the kids college with cash. You don't need to waste your life making somebody else rich. You just don't need to do it. And here's a shameless plug. I also want you to join my Facebook group. <laughs> Actually, if you'll put the link up there, it's in the chat and it's the Cash Flow Queens of Real Estate. Sorry, guys, we are not allowing you into the Cash Flow Queens, but I am working on a plan to start a group for everybody to share some knowledge, make some passive income, get their real estate started. But I'll also tell you that, guys, you are more than welcome. I have a private group, and that is just for my students. We share deals in there. We share wins in there. I do a weekly chat. I put the, um, the link in there. I put motivation in there. Like, I am all real estate all the time, and I think that's what you're really going to love about me. So real quick. Does everybody have their hand out? I sent it kind of late. Actually, somebody in the Cash Flow Queens group was like, hey, I signed up for the webinar, but I need a worksheet for that. So we sent it out. There is a worksheet. And if you have it, great. If you don't have it, you can take some notes and you can probably, you know, figure it out. But if you do have that worksheet, it's going to help you, especially in the next three slides, because I want you to write down your fears. What is really keeping you from a real estate portfolio, a real estate rental empire? What is it that's bothering you? Because I'm going to tell you right now that you don't need a license. You don't need a real estate license. In fact, I kind of prefer that you don't have a real estate license. But if you do, that's okay. We can work through that and show you how to make way more money. You also don't need any experience. My mom, my dad, my grandfather, everybody in my family has real estate. They all have a rental portfolio. I grew up with mama saying, hey, go to the mailbox and get my rent. I need some money. Go to the mailbox and get the rent check out. Okay, but now you don't have to go to the mailbox and get rent. I literally wake up in the mornings on the first and the fifth of the month and I've got more money in my account. Like it's just in my inbox. Boom. Here's some money with. Have a good day. You don't need any experience. You don't have to live. You didn't have to grow up that way to be able to make a change now. And if you didn't grow up that way, I bet your kids didn't grow up that way either. And it's definitely time to start showing them a better side to life. You also don't need any money. I mean, this whole put 20% down and get a mortgage for 30 years, that's a bunch of baloney. Like, I don't know who decided that was going to be a good idea and why we all bid into it hook, line, and sinker, but that is no way to start a portfolio. If you did that on your primary house, all right, fine, I'll forgive you because you didn't know better until tonight. But if you think you're going to get rich, you're crazy. All you're doing is making the bank rich. And y'all, they got plenty of money. We don't need to give them any more. You also don't need good credit. Every house I have ever bought, I have sat down in front of the seller and I have yet for any of them to ask me about my credit. So if you have bad credit, nobody cares, okay? I personally think credit is this made up unicorn that doesn't matter to anybody anywhere except banks and I don't need banks to buy houses. So I don't care about credit. A lot of you are also worried about getting those 3 a.m. phone calls that the toilet's clogged up. I don't get those. Nobody's calling me at 3 a.m. Don't bother me. In fact, usually at 9, I Cinderella out of here, okay? So don't worry about those late-night phone calls. And also, don't worry about evictions. Like, people will not buy a house. They will not try to make money because they're afraid that maybe if and when someday somebody won't pay or they'll punch a hole in their sheetrock. And I'm like, seriously? That's what's stopping you? I mean, an eviction is no more than just sending my attorney an email and being like, hey, Dude didn't pay. He's got to go. Send me a bill when he's gone. Evictions are no big deal. Also, scamming. Okay, so when I got started, and I'll tell you this again later, I went to my first real estate boot camp, and um, my boyfriend, he's my husband now, Jason, he said to me, you are wasting your time. That is a scam. Nobody needs what you are talking about, and nobody will work with you. It is a scam. Do not throw good money away. <laughs> he eats those words on the side every morning for breakfast, all right, y'all? <laughs> like, 
eat this, not a scam. I'm amazing. <laughs> so let's hear it. In the comments here, y'all tell me, what kind of fears do you have? Why haven't you started this portfolio? Have they been telling you what is keeping them from a portfolio? No, not yet. Come on, Ashley's sitting over here, she looks bored. Y'all tell her, why haven't you started? I've been hearing your fears. You're writing down your fears on your handout, aren't you? Go ahead, type it out, because if that's your fear, somebody else has the exact same fear. So, let me know whatever the fear is or maybe it's not a fear maybe it's an excuse here's some excuses i hear quite frequently i don't know what to do first where should i start how will i learn this new vocabulary and let me start stop you right here new vocabulary are you kidding me in college half of us rented an apartment anyway that's it rent that's not a difficult word y'all it's not a brand new vocabulary. And if you do hear something, if I say something tonight that you don't understand, tell me, tell me in the comments. Please tell me, I don't wanna speak over your head because it's all just so, so basic. It should be words that you know, terms that you understand, and you know, maybe sometimes my Southern slang gets in the way, but otherwise, you should be fine. You're also worried about who should I hire? What if I hire the wrong people? Well, why do you need people right now okay I was a one-woman show for like the first two years and need anybody you certainly don't need to start paying anybody anything what if they destroy the property what if I buy destroyed property okay well I can show you how to look at a property and know if the foundation is cracked and here's your first clue if you can see daylight while you're standing in the basement there's a problem with the foundation if the whole house is black and stinks on the inside, it's probably been on fire, okay? A lot of the stuff is really basic. You are completely overcomplicating it. Or maybe your excuse, and go ahead and tell me what your excuses are in the chat here. Maybe your excuse is that you're risk adverse. You just absolutely cannot stand. You cannot live with yourself thinking that somebody is in your property and they might do something bad. I'll show you how to screen them. Now, I can't help it if they walk around in their underwear and you would never walk around in your underwear in your house or in somebody else's, but people are gonna do that if they're renting a house from you, so you just gotta get used to it. You're also thinking, you know what? I have really stable income right now. I make a solid 50 grand a year, and that's all I'm ever gonna need. Are you kidding me? That's like what, three or four grand a month? Y'all are barely surviving. 50 grand, you're not retiring on that. That's, that's tiny, that's tiny, tiny, tiny. The other thing is you're not sure about the legalities. Do you need an attorney? Do you need an insurance agent? Do you need this and that and the other? We will get there, okay? You're way too far down the line if that's what you're worried about, okay? This is baby steps, guys. Let's, let's go th through this one at a time. You wanted to know, how do I get started? You don't need to worry about the legalities right now. You need to actually get started, okay? You tell me you don't have time. I don't believe that because I have been sitting at my stepson's baseball game, football practices, all that other stuff, and looking up comps, looking up comparable sales, looking up tax records, looking up what's for sale around me, okay? Y'all are just sitting there lying to the other moms and dads anyway. You could be using that on your laptop. You could be writing letters then. You've got plenty of time. All we need to do is tweak and maybe twist a little bit of the time you're wasting right now so you can be making money doing that. Also, y'all watching the TV shows, Fixer Uppers, one of my favorites, love it, great, whatever. Those are also great money-making opportunities. Do we need assets? Do we need to talk about taxes? Age is a big one. I'm too young to get started. I'm too old to get started. Whatever. Quit with the excuses. And I'll tell you, one of my favorite excuses, a woman actually said this to me on the phone. She was like, you know what, Winnie? I'm not going to become a real estate investor because I know I would be a success. And if I'm a success, my family will treat me different. I was like, all right, we're done here. I can't work with you. Everybody I know wants to be successful. I purposely hang around, I surround myself with successful people and people who want to be more successful. And you are not too busy to live out your goals and live out your dreams. All right, write down your excuses. Take them from this list, take them from whatever you got, but I know you got a ton of them. 
And are you ready for this? Scratch them out because they are crap. Okay? They are nothing more than you staying in your box, staying in your comfort zone, staying in your job, which is just over broke, and living just like everybody else. Okay? This stuff only exists in your head. You can get out of it. You have to want to. You have to make a shift. So if you're ready, let's do it now. All right. The plan for tonight, we are talking about seven ways to buy your first rental property. And we are going to cover the who, the what, when, why, where, and the how, just like a good reporter. All right? So right now on your handout, I want you to say next to the who, this is about you. You are the who here. And the what is real estate investing. Real estate investing. You can say real estate investing for profits, for retirement, for whatever you want it to be. And when is now? Now is the time. And I'm, I'm ser so serious when I say that right now is what, November 15th, 16th? Now is the perfect time to get started because the end of the year is in six weeks. People are going to be dumping properties right and left. They're going to be making deals. And if you're not in it to win it right now, it's going to be a year before this <laughs> magic happens again. And you know what happens after November and December? January, February, and March. And in January, February, and March, people start counting the days until they get their income taxes back. And you know what they want to do with that? They want to buy the properties that you bought in November and December. But if you don't buy anything in November and December, you don't have any way of helping these people come January, February, and March. They're going to give me all their money. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Except for the ones of you that aren't in Knoxville. I'm in Knoxville. I'm only buying in Knoxville. And I don't believe in competition. Even if you are in Knoxville, my honey hole is so small and it is so surrounded that you're not going to be my competition. Another woman said that to me on the phone. She's like, Whitney, why would you mentor all these other people and, you know, so they can compete against you when you go out for these deals? And I was like, uh, first of all, I would be happy to go up against one of my students because I know that they have a formula. I know they have a strategy. I know they have a plan. I know they're not just winging it. What happens when you wing it? You waste money. I would love to go up against somebody I taught. In fact, I'd probably just bow out and be like, you got it. I'm proud of you. <laughs> and we're going to have a bonus round. So stay tuned. Hang out with me all the way to the end. And I'm going to tell you, I'm doing this thing like most gurus where they hold that carrot out in front of your nose so you can't actually get all the good information. Y'all, I'm about to overload you, like completely overload you on actual skills and strategies that I use that I have used and that I teach my students, okay? So sharpen your pencils. Write this down. This is gonna be a fill in the blank. I am a successful real estate investor. I have all the money I need to do any deal I want. I am proud of myself. My family is proud of my accomplishments. I have more income every month. I have a retirement plan, and I am a happy person with time to play. Write it down, fill in the blanks, say it with me, hang it on your mirror so that when you're putting your makeup on tomorrow, you're going to be like, yeah, I am a successful real estate investor. Of course I have all the money I need to do any deal I want. I am so stinking proud of myself. And my family is beaming with pride from all of my accomplishments. I have more money than I need every month, and I don't have to work for it. I have a real retirement plan now, and I am a happy person with plenty of time to go play. 21 days to start a habit. If you will repeat that to yourself for the next 21 days, you will be convinced Every one of those things is absolutely true. And guess what? They will be true. And if you don't believe me, try it. I dare you. <laughs> All right. Everybody got those answers down? They'll pop back up later if you need them. All right. This is my first deal. 
let's get into the real estate now. It's nothing special. And y'all, I gotta tell you that I'm nothing special either, okay? I'm a girl that wanted out of a rut and I climbed out. And one of my first <laughs> climbing experiences was on this chunk of trees and grass. It's on Prosser Road here in Knoxville. It is nothing special. And if you drove by that, you wouldn't even turn your head to notice it, would you? Of course not. There's nothing there. There's nothing to look at. Except this driveway. A lot of people, when they start thinking about their rental properties, they forget that they can just buy land. And I tell all my students, I tell every podcast, every radio, every TV interview I do, that if you're afraid of somebody punching a hole in your sheetrock, buy land. They're not going to punch a hole in the tree. They're not going to punch the grass. It's not going to bother you if they do. And this driveway right here, this driveway is amazing. I wish I had a little pencil, but okay. So this driveway, regular driveway, the right side of this driveway, all the way back to where these trucks are, I own that. Yes, I have a half acre piece of industrial land over here. See, there's a pile of gravel on it that hasn't even been spread. It's just trees and grass. But with my ownership of the right side of this driveway, I called my neighbor over here who is a Fortune 500 company and I said, hey neighbor, you're driving on my land and I need some rent for it. If you're gonna use my land to get to your trucks, to get to the back of your shop, I need some money, honey. And they were like, no, little real estate girl, that's not possible. And I was like, okay, fine. So they had their survey to check it out. They called me back two weeks later and they were like, hey, how about some money? Because it turns out you own the right side of this driveway. And I was like, I know, I told you that. Except when you're talking to somebody that you're trying to make some money off of, you say, yes, sir. <laughs> so I love this driveway. And I'm going to show you that with this driveway, you don't need any large chunks of change. You don't need a bank. You can use cold, hard cash to buy a driveway like this because I'm gonna break it down. I bought this at an auction. It was an online only auction. The bidding ended at midnight and my final max bid was 1200 bucks. I had to pay 10% buyer's premium to the auctioneer, 120 bucks. Taxes, closing costs, other stuff that they throw on top of it. My HUD statement, my final statement at the closing table was $1,586.36. 1500 bucks, 1600 bucks, whatever. Then I turned around, and after my neighbor agreed that I was right, they offered me $250 a month just to be able to drive on my driveway to access their property. That's pretty cool because my payback time was six months. Y'all do the math. 250 times six equals 1,500, right? In my lease, I got them to agree that they would pay the taxes of like $50 a year and they would be responsible for any maintenance that needed to be done. So if it needs gravel, guess who's paying for it? Them, not me. I have cash flow forever, okay? Forever. And yes, $250 a month per, like for life, it may not change your life, but think about what an extra 250 a month could do that you don't have to go to work for. You don't have to clock in for. You don't have to ask somebody for an allowance. You just get 250. You can get manicures and pedicures. You can get a new coach bag. You're not going to get a Louis Vuitton bag unless you save up a couple months, but you could get a new coach bag every month. It could pay for the utilities at your house. It could go towards your principal pay down on your mortgage so that every year, instead of owing 30 years and then 29 years, suddenly you're at 30 years and then 24 years because you took a big chunk off the principal. Then you're going to be ready to invest, right? As soon as you get that principal paid off, you could go on a weekend trip. I mean, 250 could easily cover a hotel night for Friday night and Saturday night. You have a little escape with your significant other. You could party. You could throw a party. You could have a Super Bowl party. You could do whatever you free, feed your friends and family over Thanksgiving for free. Or you could just have walking around pocket change. 
You know, you go to the parking lot, you need some money. Oh, got rent. Here's some, here's a 20. But what I want you to do with that is save that cash and buy another piece of land so that you can rent it for $500 a month. You save that and then you buy another piece. You rent the third piece for $1,000 a month. Now you're bringing in $1,750 a month after, what, 18 months or two years? Now we're talking about bringing in some real money every month, aren't we? Yes, we are. In the comments here, tell me what else you would use. If you just got $250 a month for the rest of your life, what would you use it for? I would use it for more real estate auctions. This is the first house that I ever bought at an auction. And yes, I chose that blue color on that porch. And since I chose that blue color, I now have a panel of people that I have to run paint samples by before I can paint anything. Luckily, that's the only thing that I painted that color and it's faded some. <laughs> and I found some colors that I actually do like and I only use two different colors now. So, this house is a three bedroom, one bath. It's got a garage. It's on a half acre in the city of Knoxville. And how did I find this little gym? Same way you're going to find real estate auctions in your area, in your neighborhood. Google. Go to Google, go to Yahoo, go to Bing, go to wherever you want to and type in real estate auctions near me. If that doesn't bring anything up because you're in the boondocks, try real estate auctions in the name of a city or county that you're close to that you would be interested in buying properties in. Don't overcomplicate it. If you still can't find an auctioneer or an auction company, go to auctioneers.org. That's the National Auctioneers Association website, and they will tell you who is a real estate auctioneer near you. Now, what I don't want you to do when we talk about auctions is go to auction.com <laughs> because unless you have endless supplies of money, time, and patience, they only deal with foreclosures, which is a F word. It's a bad word, okay? I don't deal with foreclosures. I'm never going to talk to you about foreclosures except to say that I hate them. I'm not dealing in them, and there's way too many other ways to buy houses with no money, no credit, and no banker giving me permission to put an offer in. Ugh, not auction.com. <laughs> but at this auction, I went and I bought it for $32,000 in cash, which was basically my life savings, plus the 10% buyer's premium to the auctioneer. I had to install a shower because it had an old clawfoot tub. And then I rented it for $800 a month, totally winging it, okay? And this is how newbies lose their life savings or more because they don't know what they're doing. They just throw some money out, see if it sticks. Okay, we're not cooking pasta here. You can't just throw a noodle up on the wall and see if it's done. That's not how we do real estate. You have to have a plan. So once I figured out what I was doing wrong and how to fix it, I put a lease option tenant buyer in this house. I gave them two years to buy it at a purchase price of 79,000. I rented it to them for $800 a month. If they gave me 10,000 up front, which they did, and 10,000 to renew if they didn't have their credit ready to buy it within those first two years, which they did. So I've gotten 20,000, 800 per month for the last 24 months. I'm almost paid off on my initial investment and they still owe me like $72,000. So when they do go get that mortgage, I'm going to come home with a $72,000 check. Or they're going to leave and I'll do it again. But at that point, I got all my money back. It's all free-flowing cash flow at this point. That's good stuff, y'all. I'm willing to bet that if it's not you, then somebody out there has a house in a regular rental program, and they're probably accidental landlords, and they just want to know how to make more money. Maybe you bought a house, you outgrew it, you had good credit, you went and got a mortgage, you bought another house, and honey, what are we going to do with the first house? Oh, let's just rent it. Okay, but how are we going to make more money, and how do we be landlords? What if I don't want all this pressure? Well, I'm going to tell you. And 
What it is, is not getting a real estate license. That will not help you learn how to turn this rental, this accidental landlord situation into money, okay? I get texts all the time. Uh, one of my students actually texted me earlier today and she's an agent in Georgia and she was like, you know what, I was thinking about getting my broker's exam, but I met with my mentor that she's had with for six years and she was like, you know what, the whole time he was talking, all I could do is think about you and the videos and the things that I've learned and how much more money I'm going to make when I don't have to list these houses anymore. She's like forcing herself to complete these listings, to take listings, to talk about the old and slow way of doing real estate. It's so boring once you see a better side. The other thing is I get agents to call me. A lot of my leads, a lot of my deals will call from an agency and they're going to be like, hey, Whit, I saw your ad. I saw you on Facebook. I saw that you're doing all this cool stuff. I have no idea what you're doing because I only went to real estate school and didn't ever really learn how to be an investor. So whatever it is you do, could you do this to my house? Sure. <laughs> I'll be glad to. I was like, and this is an agent that I knew in college, and I told her, I said, do you want me to teach you how to do what I do? And she was like, nah, I'm cool, kind of busy, just do your thing and get me some money. Okie dokie. And y'all, that's a great source of leads. Like if you're trying to jot down leads, agents have awesome leads. And you know what? You can't pay them legally unless you have a license also. And if you do have a license and you're going to pay another agent, you have to pay their broker, the broker gets a split of it, and then the agent gets a couple pennies. So you might as well just take her out for a glass of wine. <laughs> Another great way to buy houses is off FISBO signs. And FISBO, F-S-B-O, that's a for sale by owner. That house that you're looking at right there, that is the second house that I ever bought. And again, when I bought this house, it's on Burns Road. I had no plan, had no strategy. I was completely just hoping and praying that this wild roller coaster I was on would amount to something. <laughs> and it did. It amounted to a whole heap of a mess. But what I want you to look for are these for sale by owner signs. They look like bright red and white targets to me. And they basically say, please buy me. I have no clue what I'm doing and I'm too cheap to pay an agent. Somebody just take this thing away from me. And so many of my deals will come from a for sale by owner sign or a for rent sign. They don't want to rent it. They want to sell it, but they don't know how and they don't have a clue what they're doing. In fact, you could buy apartments, whole apartment complexes by just calling on the for rent sign and saying, hey, do you kind of want to sell these? Yes, actually, I do. These for sale by owner people are begging you to take their property. But if you're not sure how to talk to them, you won't get the deal. If you don't know how to approach this, you're not going to get the deal. And I should not have gotten that deal on that house. Okay, so I promise to be completely real with you tonight, to be completely transparent, to be completely open and honest with you, okay? That's what you're going to get from me tonight. So here's the real story on that house. I paid twenty grand for it. $20,000, last dime of my life savings. In fact, I had to call my brother and say, hey man, <laughs> you want to throw in on this house with me? Because kind of in over my head. I want it. I want to be a real estate investor, but I need to put some work into it. I need to put some action behind these words and I think we should buy this. It's only 20 grand. What, what's there to lose? We were sitting at the closing table and I will never forget the seller looked at me dead straight in the eyes and he said, I am so glad that you bought this house for 20 grand because no other investor in town offered me nearly this much money. <laughs> and my heart sank and I was like, oh crap. <laughs> Maybe this is a disaster. No, 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 no. You're good, Wit. You're fine. You're young. You're naive. You're completely brash. You're just totally winging this and somehow, some way, you'll be a success. Just put some carpet in it. Throw some paint on the walls. I mean, it smells like a little old lady because little old lady lived in there. We could fix it, no problem, over the weekend. Y'all, that's not what happened. 
we ended up having to put all new electrical in, all new windows in. It had original hardwoods. The subfloors had termite damage. And when I say subfloors, I don't just mean the plywood underneath. I mean like the floor joists. <laughs> We're gone. There's snake skins in the basement. There's also daylight in the basement. We had bad contractors. Tyler and I are putting our personal paychecks into this house. Our timeline went from a month turnaround before we could rent it to almost 18 months. 18 months we have our whole life sunk into this house and we're still throwing money at it every week when we get paid. We're eating at mom's house because we cannot go out. <laughs> we're drinking the cheap beer because we can't go to the bar. We had inspectors, we had the codes guys, we had cast iron pipes that were, you know, basically just little rat runs. The place did not have air conditioned, an air conditioning unit or a heating unit. And I don't know how I missed that when I looked at it, but sure enough, we had to put all new tubing throughout the house, whole new unit. That was an $8,000 lesson. And throughout all of this, I got my doubts and I got my fears. <laughs> and the ones that I started with were 10 x by the time it was over with. And the ones I didn't even know were possible started coming up. And it was just pure grit and determination to make it out of there. This is my brother, literally, not literally, but actually holding the house up. Because if you can see, he's standing at the front of the house. And if you look to the right, that wall is completely gone. If you look straight to the back, you can see like a two by 10 or two by 12 or something right here. That's the back wall gone. Y'all, our foundation was completely toast. Completely toast. We had to put a brand new $15,000 foundation under this house. And yes, that's Tyler being funny. And luckily he does have a sense of humor because this house was shot. But we got it done, 18 months later, August 27th, I think, I got a payday, finally. It had been a long time since I had a payday. Not only had we bought the Blue Porch House, which is Cedarwood, but we had bought the Foundation House, which was Burns. I'd flipped another house out in Pal. And these were my checks. In one day, I sold all three houses. Well, we had the closing all lined up. And I want to tell you that if I was a normal sleazeball guru, I would fluff these numbers to what my gross was. This is my net, okay? This is what I actually got to bring home. And I'm not trying to pump you full of unicorns and rainbows. I'm not that kind of girl. And I got to tell you that my first $100,000 day was amazing. I was on complete cloud nine. I was so ready to take everybody to yield and get a stake. And it was just like, I just knew that I'd found the truth in the life and God was going to let me ride all the way through this. But in real estate investing, there's good and there's bad. And yes, you're sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, if I got one of those checks, I could quit my job. If I got half of one of those, and remember I did this in six months after I figured out a system, after I knew what I was doing. My flip took 18 months, but in the meantime, I figured out how to sell it fast, which is the key here, so I could get the money. So, these days are totally possible, and I love them. And that was just my first big day. I've had lots of big days since then. But I want to tell you about the day I cried in the kitchen because if you're a new investor and you're new to all of this stuff, you're going to have a bad day. And I don't like this word. I don't like the N word. It doesn't suit me very well. I like to say it. I don't like to hear it. And I really wasn't ready for it when the seller told me no this this time and it wasn't the first time that a seller had told me no it was just that it was like two days after I'd made a hundred grand like I thought I was a complete genius and I had it all figured out and everybody was gonna want to work with me and my hard days were over and it was just gonna be perfect from here on out 
And I thought it was me. Like I, I took it absolutely personally when he said, no, it's not going to happen. You can't have my house. I was like, what did I do? What did I do wrong? I'm awesome. I've been doing all these deals. I'm completely killing it. And I called Jason and I'm absolutely bawling in the kitchen floor. He lives in Georgia. So I'm calling him and he was like, I can't understand you. You have to calm down. You have to talk slow. Like what is going on? You were so excited yesterday. And I was like, they told me no. And I got to tell you that Jason has been a negative Nancy from the very beginning. Okay. I told you earlier, I was getting negativity from him, from my friends, from some family members, strangers were giving me all sorts of crap, telling me this would never work, that I had church camp mentality, and as soon as I got started and got back to the real world, I'd realized that I'd just been like fed this cult of information about real estate investing. And with all my real estate talk, nobody wanted to hear it. Nobody wanted to deal with me. Y'all, everything that you're hearing when you're starting to tell people that you want to be a real estate investor, I've heard it all. And I've heard it several different times, and I'm not afraid of it. But this is when, I think this is when Jason, like, really got me. Because he gave me a strong hand to hold to. And he pulled me mentally out of that hole. And I've been able to to be that strong hand for my students. Because I'll tell you, the first time somebody tells you no, or the first time somebody says, yeah, this sounds great, and then they call you later that day, and they're like, actually, my wife said I can't do that. Actually, I prayed about it, and God said it was a bad idea. Actually, I asked my brother-in-law, who has an agent, who's, a best, who's his best friend, and he said that it was kind of scary. So no, I don't want to do it. I've been there with my students when they've been. I haven't been there with them, but I've been on the phone with them when they've been crying in the kitchen, when they've been just so lost that they didn't know what to do. And I've helped them overcome those doubts. I've helped them through those bad days. I've had bad days. I've had good days. But you know what you have to do is you have to keep going. There's more deals out there. Y'all, shit happens. And yes, I love Jesus, but I do cuss a little, so you might as well get used to that right now. You have to keep going. You have to do more deals. There are people out there, just because this jerk says that he doesn't want to work with you, there's 10 or 15 people out there behind him that do need you. They need you to buy their house. They need you to take over this problem from them. All you got to do is find them. So, picked up my big girl panties and said, you're right, boyfriend, Jason. Look at all these other deals I have. Look at all these other people that I've helped. And what, from March until August, all these are houses that I bought. All these are houses that I've made money on. All of these are people. They're not just houses. They're not just sticks and bricks. These are people that I helped. They had a situation, and I'll get to the situation in just a second, but they needed me. And for all the doubt and all the negativity that I've suffered through and that you will surely go through, my track record speaks for itself. Like, I have done more deals and made more money than my agent friends have. And I've been able to keep the deals to make residual money going forward. So I know that if I can do this, you can do this too. The only deal is you have to make a shift. You have to be decisive. You have to get out there and do this. You don't have to go it alone, though. But you do have to get started. You have to say, wit, I'm in. Let's do this. And I know what you're saying right now is, but Whitney, I don't have enough money to pay cash for a house. That's what you sound like to me when you start whining to me on the phone, by the way. I thought you were going to show me how to buy houses without money or credit or banks. All right, well, I'm getting there. Just give me a second. I had to tell you all this so that I could tell you that I ran out of money. Flat broke. Nothing else coming in. Can't buy anything else except I still had these big dreams, these big plans, and nothing to back it up. The other thing was I had all these deals coming at me. Like I was out of money. But I had all these systems out there that said, you know, I buy houses. I want to be a real estate investor. And once that water starts flowing, it's really hard to stop it. 
those leads and those houses, they just keep coming and finding you. And once I can get your water to start flowing, that you buy houses and you're a real estate investor, you're going to be amazed at how easy it is to get these leads and talk to these sellers and do these deals. Like it's completely mind blowing. Everywhere I went, People were confessing their real estate sins, sins to me. And once people start confiding in you and telling you that they have this and they have that and they need to get rid of it and they're underwater here and they can't make these payments and they got all these problems, and you know there has to be a way for you to help these people and solve their problems. In fact, I found an article today when you talk about, you know, people just confessing that they've got these empty houses and they're making these payments on them or they've got empty houses that they've inherited or there's all sorts of ways that people have houses they just don't want anymore. And I found this website today and it says that there's 18 million vacant houses in the United States. That's enough for every homeless person to have six. So when you tell me that there aren't any vacant houses in your neighborhood, I'm calling bullshit. <laughs> because they're there they're everywhere okay um, Letitia called me texted me earlier today and she was like she started with me last week and she was like oh my gosh I am seeing signs I am seeing the notices I am seeing the empty houses I am seeing all this stuff and I have driven by these places my whole life and I never noticed them but in the last week Whitney, since you've shown me what to look at, they are everywhere. Like, I'm practically tripping over deals now. And I was like, yep, I know. I told you so. <laughs> so what are you going to do with these deals, though? Once I show you how, where they are and that they're everywhere and that you don't have to work hard, you don't have to do these yellow letter campaigns and you don't have to put a bunch of bandit signs out and you don't have to do all these tricks that the gurus have taught you. All you got to do is the stuff that works. And I'm not going to teach you how to do anything that doesn't work. So let's talk about subject two for a second. Because if we're going to mention the gurus, we have to talk about subject two. And in case you're completely new to real estate, this basically means what you're going to say to the seller is, yes, Mr. Seller, Mrs. Seller, I will buy your house subject to the mortgage staying in your name. And I paused right there for dramatic effect because I know you just spit out your coffee and you're like, nobody is going to let me buy their house and keep their mortgage in their name. You are crazy. Got to tell you, I've heard that before. And my first deal was subject to. So it might be crazy, but I'm also effective. <laughs> okay. I'm also an action taker. I'm also not afraid to get out there and try. Because when you try and you take action, you're a lot farther ahead than if you just say, nope, not possible. Peace out. I'm gone. So this was my very first deal. All right. This little house. Love this house. This is actually what you're looking at right now. The day I got it was what March 12th, and it says it expires in December. I'm not sure about that, but March 12th, day I got it. And this was my ad. Look how pathetic that is. I mean, isn't that sad? Y'all have seen my ads now. I've come a long way, haven't I? But you know what? I sold that house on that ad. Here's the details. The people I bought it from, had bought it as their retirement house. They were going to live in this house forever and ever. Amen. Then their daughter came home and she was pregnant and there wasn't enough room in the house for the grandparents, the mother and the new baby. She's not big enough. They got to go. So I told them I was new first deal. Didn't know that I needed to get 10 or 15 years. Didn't know that I could ask for 10 or 15 years. So I said, all right, y'all, I will buy this house, leaving the mortgage in your name. It's a subject to deal. I did a whole little mini real estate seminar right there at their kitchen table. They did not care. All they wanted to know is, will you make the payments? Will you take care of the house? And when will we close? So I took it for three years, subject to. I agreed to give them 122,000 for this house because that's what they told me their payoff was. And if that's what their payoff is, you can't really do better than that. 
okay? They're not going to pay me to buy their house, but I can buy it for what they owe. The comps, the comparable sales, everything else in this neighborhood was selling for about a buck forty. So I felt pretty good saying, "All right, for my first deal, I'm going to take this house for one twenty-two. I could probably sell it for one forty. Oh, and my monthly payment, their monthly payment was like seven ninety-two and some change. Whatever, we'll round that to eight hundred dollars, and I'll give you eight hundred bucks a month. How's that sound? In fact, I'll just make it straight to your bank, so you don't have to worry about it, and then I don't have to worry about it." So put it out with my little ad that you just saw, and another couple called me. They were looking for a retirement house. They were moving from Chicago. This house was a perfect price for them, and the distance was perfect to the lake because they were moving to Tennessee because the husband was a kayaker, and that's what he wanted to do every day in his retirement was kayak. They said, listen, Whitney, when our Chicago house sells, we're just going to give you cash for this one. And we have it listed right now. There's a good chance that it'll sell pretty quick. And then we'll just cash out this deal. And I was like, yeah, right. I've got this whole thing set up for a subject to deal, and I am not letting it go. Like, I'm going to do this. And they said, if we give you cash, will you take 135 And I was like, hold up. Maybe they're serious. Uh, yeah, okay. I'll play your game. I'll take 135. I could get 140, but if you're going to pay me cash, like how, how soon are we talking about? And they were like, within two months. And I was like, really? Well, I've got other people looking at this house. I lied. I said, if somebody else makes me a better offer and they're going to give me 140 or what I'm asking for 145, I'm going to go with somebody else. And they said, well, we will rent it from you at a thousand dollars a month until our Chicago house sells. Y'all, we closed this house on May 4th, okay? I got it on March the 12th, according to that advertisement that we just saw, and we closed on May the 4th. So I bought it for 122. I had a contract to sell it for 135. My assignment fee was $13,000. Literally had this house for like no time at all, and I'm gonna make $13,000, but don't forget, I'm renting it at a thousand dollars a month and I told my seller that I wouldn't make the first payment for 90 days so this rental income comes straight to me because I don't have a payment due yet that is cool all in all done I've rounded these numbers my check I've got it framed down in my office and I just don't have a copy of it but it was just over fifteen thousand dollars that went straight into hit National Bank with about five to six hours total time involved over about eight weeks. I think the first time I met with the seller was February 27th or 28th. So from the very first meeting, the very first phone call to the closing was just at eight weeks. Y'all, this is none of my money involved. Nobody asked me for a down payment. Nobody asked me for the payments. I had 90 days. The sellers didn't ask for my credit and I sure as shit didn't have to go to the bank to get their permission to see if I could do this deal. This was all in, all done. A $15,000 payday in eight weeks. Now, wouldn't you like that? And that is why assignments are greater than wholesaling. Because this house that you're looking at right now, okay, it's kind of ugly in this picture, but it's not like falling down. It's not a crack house. It's not in a bad neighborhood. It's sure not in a war zone. I got an assignment on this house as well. It wasn't as big. I think it was only like eight grand. But I still made pretty good money on this, whereas if I would have wholesaled it, I would have made like three or four grand. Oh, and if you're not sure what wholesaling is, it's a buzzword, and the gurus, the uh, geniuses, the uh, sleazy salesmen, they all throw around wholesaling to capture people into a weekend seminar. They pump you full of hopes and lollipops, and then as long as you have a credit limit, They'll take you on to the next stage. Ooh. Y'all, wholesaling is a one-hit wonder. I don't like it. If I'm going to work hard, I want to get paid multiple times. And it's just too much work. Wholesaling is way too much work. I'd rather figure out a way that I could put some limited time in it 
put no sweat equity in it. Ugh, I hate it when people say they put sweat equity into a deal. And I sure don't want to do regular real estate as a listing agent or as a broker. It's just all, ugh. And if, if you feel like me, if you just want more money and more free time, how would you work your tail off doing regular real estate or wholesaling? So, the fifth way that you can buy a house is OPM. And that stands for other people's money. <laughs> this is a little shack that I bought for $17,000 with no money. The comps on it said it was worth forty-five dollars or $50,000. My seller in this case was a small business owner and he needed a truck so that he could get his job done so that he could haul whatever it was he was trying to haul and the truck cost 17 grand so he basically traded me the deed to the house for the title to a car. <laughs> you know what's great about this house? People on Facebook loved this house because it had an outhouse. <laughs> if you can see right here on the edge, that's an outhouse. And maybe we only have those in Tennessee, but that's where you used to go outside of the house to go potty. Yeah, my outhouse house. I love this house. And when we talk, you, when you put this stuff out on Facebook, you're just giving people something to talk about, right? My friends, my family, they all love my real estate stories. But I got to tell you that my friends and family, you would think when I stood up and said, okay, y'all, I'm going to be a real estate investor. Send me your deals. Send me your leads. You would think that they'd be like, yeah, I'm going to support you. I'm going to send you everything I know. We're totally going to rock this for you. I got your back. That's not correct. And that's not how it happened. They love my stories and they love to talk about my stories, but they weren't bringing me any leads. They weren't bringing me any deals. They were just talking until this house happened. This house was owned by three sisters and their mother passed and they said, you know what? I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to deal with any rehab. I don't want to do anything. This house was so dated. It had a pink bathroom and I love pink bathrooms, but this house came straight from Facebook because my mom shares all of my statuses, okay? And they've been following along with my progress. So when I showed up to this house, there was a man coming out and I just had this sixth sense, maybe it was a woman's intuition, but he was a real estate agent. And I don't care to go up against a real estate agent or to go up against a wholesaler because remember y'all, I don't believe in competition. If I'm the best, I'm going to win. I am a millennial, but I also like to win. <laughs> so when you get to a house, there's an agent, there's a wholesaler, there's another investor there. What are you going to do? Well, when they come out and it's your turn to go in, you shake their hand, you say hello, and you ask them if they have anything they'd like to offload to you. <laughs> That's how the magic happens, y'all. It's not that difficult to get leads and turn them into deals. Leads turn into houses, deals turn into money. But if we're going to talk about other people's money and spending other people's money, oh, on the shack and on that brick house right there, I use somebody else's money to buy it because once you start showing people how much money they can be making or how much money they're losing, they're ready to get into real estate with you, even your friends and family. Okay, so some of the pros. The pros are going to be on the left side. If you're using somebody else's house, you don't really need an appraisal. You've got the comps. You've got the market value. You've got all your formulas. You've got all your statistics. You've got everything. You don't need some jerk in a suit up in some ivory tower telling you if you've been approved for underwriting or not. You also don't need any credit. Okay? These people know that you're good and you're a hard worker and that you're going to get this job done and that you've been doing your homework. And I promise you that you have hundreds of thousands of dollars at your fingertips right now, today. They're in your phone, and I'll show you how to get a hold of them. And once you help somebody make more money, 
with their money, they're going to be your fan for life. They're going to tell everybody. And suddenly, you've got more hundreds of thousands of dollars coming at you than deals that you can find to buy. <laughs> That's a good problem because you started out this show telling me that you didn't have any money, didn't you? Now I've just told you that you've got hundreds of thousands of dollars at your fingertips. And I know how to get it and start using it. Some of the little cons with other people's money is that you're going to pay a higher interest rate than if you went to the bank. At the bank right now, I think Jason just told me that to get a loan, it was 3.675% interest. I'm going to tell you right now, if you're using somebody else's money, they're going to charge you 8%, they're going to charge you 10%, they're going to charge you 12%, but that's the cost that you got to pay if you don't want to go through the appraisal process, the ivory tower, the pulling your credit, all that other crap. And it's a lot easier to get access to it but that means there's more competition for it. So if you're hanging out at the RIA meeting and there's two private money lenders there, you're in line to find out how much you can get to go flip your house. Um, you also have to consider the legal fees to get this set up. You need an LLC or you need a trust or you need some sort of protection. There's some tax implications because you are basically going into business with this person. Uh, and when you go into business with somebody, it's a lot like getting married to them. You just don't have to sleep with them. <laughs> if you do, that's a totally different situation and I'm not into that. Um, you can also make an enemy for life. So if the deal goes sour or the deal falls through, they could be mad at you and they could tell everybody that you're out here promising money and that you can't follow through. And a lot of that's just going to hurt your pride. Uh, you're also going to come up with a lot more personal skeptics because they're just not sure of it yet. And even if you've been doing this for three or 10 or 15 years, somebody's going to tell you you're crazy and they're not loaning you any money, but that's fine because whoever's sitting around you, while you're having this conversation, they're going to loan you some money. <laughs> you also have to worry about the SEC, and that is not the Football League. That is the Securities Exchange Commission. There are so many rules, regulations, laws, fines, penalties, really scary stuff involved with borrowing other people's money. So don't just jump in to getting other people's money and thinking it's going to rock and roll. This is going to need to be a completely separate conversation that we're going to have one-on-one -on -one with your accountant and your attorney in the room. <laughs> I'm not having this conversation with you by myself, but just know it's possible. Okay, another lead, another way that you're going to get deals, another way you're going to get into houses that you didn't even know existed is called a referral. Okay, we deal with this a lot in real estate. Everybody knows that referrals are the best way to get new business. Referrals are the best way to get repeat business. Maybe in your business, you know what a referral is. It's kind of common knowledge. Referrals. I used this person and they were good for me. You should use them. They'll be good for you too. So you can get referrals from your insurance agent. My insurance agent literally called me one day and said, hey, I have a family. They're going to sell mom's house. Do you want to put an offer in on it before they get an agent involved or before they start marketing it? And I was like, yeah. So I ran over to the house, gave them an offer, and got it. That right there that you're looking at, that is an off-market property. That thing never hit the MLS. That thing is in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, which is hot in a slow market. And in a hot market, it is literally on fire. Like they have fires up in the mountains right now. Not even joking. Hot market that I got in on. Off market deal. I made 18 grand on this little dinky house after six weeks. 18 or 19. I don't know. Something ridiculous for basically no work. Um, some other ways that you can get referrals. Become friends with your mailman, and once you start investing, you're going to be home when the mailman runs. You're not right now because you're wasting your life at a job, but once you start investing full-time, once I can get you in the rhythm of this, you're going to be making friends with the mailman, the trash guys, everybody, the meter reader that comes by. They're all going to be talking to you, and those guys, especially the trash guys, the meter readers, and the mailman or women, they know where empty houses are. They know where motivated sellers are. 
And if you can get a referral from them, you will be flying high. You will never have to send a yellow letter. You will never have to hang a bandit sign. You will never have to do all these other traditional things that the other gurus are going to preach and stomp on and tell you is wonderful that are just crap. You're going to get hot leads from people who really know you. Uh, one thing I do is I give my trash guys, I leave them a bottle of water out every Tuesday. <laughs> and they bring my can back in, but they also tell me if a new house in the neighborhood looks empty. And I don't have to pay them for that. They're glad to do it. I give them a bottle of water. Happy as little larks. Other investors can send you leads, and that's really cool too because once you start in on you know, lease options, owner financing, subject to, or you're paying cash, you've got access to money, all these things, other investors are going to take notice and they're going to start sending you leads too. And then you can trade leads back and forth. Gatlinburg wasn't really my territory, but another investor from Nashville sure wasn't going to drive to Gatlinburg to take care of it. But I was close enough and I got it. Let's talk about lease options. Let's talk about this house right here in particular because this house was off market. People were living there when I went and looked at it the first time. But the way I found this is I put a tenant buyer in another house. They wanted one of my other houses, which was going to leave this house empty. So did I say, well, you should probably call a regular agent and let them list that for you so you can get the mortgage out of your name. No, I did not say that, okay? I said, well, this is perfect because I buy houses. I'll buy that house. You can move into my other house. I'll make money on both of these houses, both different ways. That's what I like to call a double transaction. We're going to make money two different ways and then three different ways. This house is up in Morristown, Tennessee. Um, another way that you're going to get lease options, and if you're still following along on the worksheet, this is section 6.12345 and 5, 6, and 7, actually. Okay, so this house is five bedrooms, two and a half baths, completely finished basement. It's on center circle. It's got a little carport. And what happened was the lady that had been living in this house for the last 10 or 15 years, um, she got remarried and her new husband had a nicer, bigger, better, badder house. So they left this one. And I don't know if you know this, but when you get remarried and two become one, everything's gravy until you realize that you're making two house payments and you're only living in one house. So what do you do? You call Whitney buys houses and she buys the house that you don't want anymore. She takes over the payments on it. She gets a lease option on it, and you don't have to worry about it anymore. Doesn't that sound good? This house is gorgeous, too. The inside of it, gorgeous. Huge yard. Y'all, one thing I want you to notice here, too, is I don't buy crap. I, I have that one little dinky shack, okay? But most of these houses, these are pretty houses. These are pretty neighborhoods. This isn't war zones where I'm afraid to be over there after dark and I'm paying and knocking people, you know, knocking their prices down to next to nothing. And it's not like that. Well, maybe this one is. <laughs> no, actually, this house is down the street from where I live. It just happened to look really ugly that day. It doesn't look that bad now that I have a tenant buyer in it. But when I bought it, it did look pretty rough. This again, though, is a late in life kind of love situation. The thing about this house, it has a $300 a month payment. Y'all raise your hand or send me a comment or make some noise in the chat room if you could squeeze out an extra $300 a month to buy this house if all you had to do was take over the payments on it. Right? I mean, that's pretty cheap. I I know people on other houses, they're paying $1,000 or $1,200 a month. So now we're looking at this little guy. He's only $300. Dude, don't even worry about it. I got to tell you all, this seller has driven me nuts. <laughs> this has been my worst seller over this $300 a month thing. Like, seriously, leave me alone. I could practically pay you up for a year in one chunk. 
but I don't. The other thing is, this house stunk. It was a cat house, and I mean they had to have 67,000 cats in here, and I spread baking soda all over those original hardwood floors, and I left that baking soda. Three, four, three or four days later, I found a buyer, and I sold it to him with the stink still in the house, with the baking soda still spread throughout the house, and it didn't bother them because they had cats too. <laughs> Gross. Okay, this house, again, on a lease option, this was a free and clear rental. Okay, this comes from a landlord that has 14 houses, and they just decided that this house was kind of the offshoot. It was the one that they didn't want to fool with, they didn't want to deal with, it was too far away, it was kind of in a bad neighborhood, but they just didn't want it. It was on five acres. It was a two-bedroom, one-bath. Hello, it's gorgeous, I'll take it. Their daughter was living in it. It was in perfect condition. And they gave me a lease option on it. Let me tell you too, a lease option basically breaks down to this. And you scratch this over on the side too. I meant to make a slide on this. If you have a house and you decide that you're gonna rent it or lease it, nobody would think that was weird, would they? Nope. If you had a house and you decided you were gonna sell it, nobody would think that was weird. Would they? Even if you have a mortgage on it, nobody would think that was weird. So all I do with the lease option is I say, okay, I'm gonna lease it with an option to purchase it at a certain day and time in the future for a certain agreed upon price. It's like killing two birds with one stone. And you can get 10 or 15 or 30 years on these things. Okay, this lease option came from an agent in California. And other agents, other investors, sometimes they don't really know how to properly analyze a house. And the only way to help them out of a bad investment is to take a lease option for a long enough term that they can wait out the market, that they can wait until, you know, if it's over leveraged now, but I can have it for 10 years, due to the principal pay down and the market coming back up, there's gonna be an intersection where I can start making money on this, but you can't do it on a one or two year time frame. You have to have 10 or 15 years. And just because they made a bad investment doesn't mean I'm gonna take it over unless I see a way to make money. All right, we've talked about remarriage, late in life love. Let's talk about the D word because all across America, people are dying and getting divorced, right? You can lease option their house. This couple literally called me, the man called me and he said, I can't talk to her, she won't talk to me. We can't agree on an agent to call, we don't care about the money, just take it away from us. When can you come look at it? When can you take it away? And I said, not really doing anything this morning. He said, come on up and by lunch, I had a contract to buy this house. Literally, that's how easy it is once you have the right bait out there, okay? If you go fishing, you're gonna use a certain bait to catch a certain kind of fish, right? It's just like that when you're trying to buy houses. You're gonna use a certain kind of marketing, a certain kind of strategy, so that you can find these deals, and they are everywhere. I'm telling y'all, they are everywhere. You are surrounded by these deals. You just don't know how to get them. This house was awesome. I actually bought this house this summer, and their kid played football, travel football. And the season started August the 1st. We were talking in June, middle of June, and they told me, we, we gotta move. We have to be installed on the other side of town, like an hour away by the 1st of August, or he can't play on the team. So I signed the paperwork. They started moving out that night. These are motivated sellers, y'all. But these aren't motivated sellers that they're underwater or they're behind on their payments. Those are like crazy, scary motivated sellers. These are just highly motivated people that want to move across town so that their kid can play travel football. I'm not talking with sad story people here. I'm talking to happy people that just want to get on with life. I bought this one this summer also, the same week that I bought that last one. June was a good month for me. 
this couple was so cute and this was a starter house he bought it before they got married they lived there for a couple years and then oops baby on the way so they had good credit they had good jobs they had strong w-2s and they got a mortgage bought another house down the street from the last house actually and left then they said, well, what are we going to do with this old house? Well, I guess we could rent it. That'll be a piece of cake, right? Y'all, they hated it. They hated being landlords. And so many accidental landlords hate being landlords that they can't stand it. It keeps them up at night. Their skin crawls. You don't have to live like that. And they don't have to live like that either. So as soon as their lease was up and their renters moved out, key word, I only take empty vacant houses. As soon as their renters moved out and I could then inspect the house, I bought it. It was gorgeous. <laughs> One of the nicest houses I bought. So now that you're full of lease options, and in case you're paying attention, I told you I was going to give you seven ways to buy a house. I've already given you <laughs> a lot more than that. I gave you seven ways to find lease option houses. So you want to know more? Owner financing is where I absolutely shine. It is where I've set myself apart from the rest of the investors, the rest of the agents, the rest of anybody that you're going to talk to that's in real estate because owner financing is the king of real estate and I am the queen, at least in East Tennessee. Real estate is said to be the king of investments and owner financing is the king of the real estate investments. Oh, I got other pictures and they are not cooperating. All right, let's just talk about this house. When I said I was going to start doing owner financing, Jason, a bunch of my friends, a couple other strangers, they said, it's not going to work. They're never going to close. You're going to have these houses. You're going to be stuck with them forever. And I was like, well, what's the problem with that? They're making money. In June, this is Michael Province, and he improved his credit and got a mortgage on this house. I sold him this house. I bought it in February. I sold it to him in March. There's not a lot of holding time on these things, guys. When you get them and you got a good price and you're rocking and rolling and you know what you can offer these people, they will take it. All right? And this is Michael. This is the day I had the uh, interview on TV in Atlanta and I drove straight home to go to the closing to collect my check because I like that money, honey. So you want to see the details? I know you do. Okay, owner financing with the seller. My purchase price was $115,000. My down payment with the seller was negotiable. I told the seller, I was like, look, dude, I don't know if I'll get any money down on this thing. I don't know if I'm going to have to spend any money to get it going. I don't know what's going to happen here. So let's wait and see what I get, and then I'll split it with you. I'm not coming out of pocket giving any sellers any money. We agreed that my monthly payment would be $600, and I didn't just pull that $600 number out of my butt. Like, I have a plan. I have a strategy. I even have software that will tell you how to come up with an appropriate monthly payment. I had 10 years to pay this off. Like, I was so ecstatic. This is my first owner financing deal, and I am beyond excited that I've got 10 years to do the deal. So, like I said, I found a lease option tenant buyer because I buy with owner financing, I sell with lease options. Very important, guys. With Michael there, my buddy Michael, his purchase price was $125,000, $10,000 more than mine. He put an option fee of $8,000 down on this house, $8,000 cash out of his pocket, and I gave him half of that towards his purchase price. Okay, so $4,000 went to me, $4,000 went to the seller. I didn't put any money out. His monthly payment was $850. So I was basically making $250 a month, and I gave him 24 months, two years, to get the job done. Now, what did I get? In my pocket, into HIP National Bank, I got an option fee for $4,000. I got monthly income, residual income of two fifty a month. But I only got it for fifteen months. And do you know why that is? Because he got a mortgage, because owner financing and lease options work. They work, y'all. I'm standing there with proof that they work. And I was gonna get two fifty a month for twenty four months, but instead, which totals thirty seven hundred and since he got $4,000 off his purchase price and I got $4,000 off my purchase price, we still had a difference of $10,000 and I got a check 
for $10,000. So for me, my grand total, just under $18,000 with no money out of pocket, none of my own credit, no banks, just people to people. If I had listed that house at 6% and I got the full 6% on a $125,000 sale, I would have got $7,500. So you tell me, would you rather have twice as much money for half as much work or do you want to get a license and do regular real estate? I don't. This is an owner financing deal and I specifically did not do a lease option on this one because I want to do a 1031 exchange which is a giant tax loophole that says you don't have to pay any capital gains taxes. And again, like working with other people's money, there's a lot more involved in it than that. I want y'all to shorten your learning curve. You don't have to suffer like I did. You don't have to go through the hours of training or anything else. You just have to let me help you. And if you'll let me help you and work one-on-one -on, -one on my VIP program, I'm going to give you a bonus. This is not for the group program and this is not for the quick start. This is only if you want the VIP program. And I'm going to show you how to do houses into apartments because here's a secret. I only buy houses so that I can buy apartments. Okay, if you have one to four units in an apartment complex that's either single family residential, a duplex, triplex, or a quadplex, you are considered residential real estate, okay? You're not exactly the big guys yet. This is a triplex that I have in Morristown. What's cool about this triplex? Well, I manage this unit by myself, no property manager, and every month I get three text messages that says, hey, unit one paid my rent, unit two, I paid my rent, hey, this is unit three, clocking in, my rent's been paid, and I'm like, thank you, y'all have a good month, see you next month. All over text message. So easy, guys. Okay, but when you get five units or more, now we're talking commercial real estate, all right? This is where the money starts to work really hard in your favor. Here's 10 units at Landmark Apartments. So let me ask you this. If you have 50 houses, then you basically have 50 roofs, you have 50 foundations, you have 50 utility bills, you have 50 addresses, you have 50 of everything except in those houses, you only have one person paying. If you have 10 units at an apartment complex, you have ideally 10 people paying. You still only have one mortgage, one note. This is three different buildings that make up 10 units, so I only have three roofs here. I only have three foundations here, but I still have 10 people paying. And y'all, these are kind of ugly. These are Class C apartments. These aren't even fancy stuff. Like you and I would probably not live in these apartments. But people do. People need apartments like this. Your expenses are less. You can hire a property manager so you don't have to deal with all of it. Your taxes are more, but your income is more also. So think about this. You have one mortgage, and say this mortgage on this property is $1,500 a month, okay? I have 10 people paying me $500 a month. So if three of them pay, my mortgage gets paid. Now with the other seven, I use that money to pay my taxes, to pay my insurance, to pay for upkeep, to pay for maintenance, to pay for new air conditioning units, to pay for improvements, all of that stuff, and then, I still have money left over. Like you actually have to find ways to spend money on apartments. Sometimes it's not very hard to find something to spend money on, but sometimes it is. <laughs> so that's one of the bonuses that I'm gonna give you if you do the VIP one-on-one -on -one program with me. And y'all, I gotta tell you, I feel like I'm giving you the farm, okay? That house that I had in Morristown, those people moved to this farm. This is 10 acres in a little two bedroom, one bath, little white house under that tree. They wanted horses, they wanted to live the country life, they wanted everything, and I feel like I am throwing everything that you can possibly want at you right now in the VIP program. And this is gonna be where the rubber is gonna meet the road, okay? 
this is the house I flipped last year. I did six flips and planned my wedding. Crazy. This is what you need. You need and you want to learn from someone who has done it. Someone has been in the trenches. Y'all, I've told you I had the bad days. I had the good days. I still have good days and bad days, but my good days far outweigh those bad days that I used to have. And I can't go back. I can't go back to having a nine to five. I can't go back to working for somebody else. I can't go back to two or three thousand dollars a month, two or three thousand dollars a week even. I, I can't live like that anymore. And you shouldn't either. And if you're reading books, and you're taking in all the free webinars, what has that gotten you? Nothing. You have not made any deals. You have not been out there hustling because you haven't had anybody pushing you the way that I'm gonna be pushing you to get it done. You need a teacher because, think about it like this. Are you gonna read a physics book and then go be a physicist? No, you're not. You're not gonna read a book and watch a YouTube video on how to speak Latin and then go be a doctor. It just doesn't work like that. You need somebody. You need a mentor. And if you're going to get into real estate, especially if you want to get into this style of real estate and you want to actually make real money and set up real residual income, you need me. I'm the only person that's going to get you there. I love Rizzo. She is so full of spunk and vinegar. She could get it done. If you're still on the fence, I gotta tell you that I've showed you my expertise. You know that I'm the real deal. I know that you can do it. I know that now is the time to get started. And I know because I've been there and it hasn't been that long ago since I took that leap of faith and said, I'm gonna do this. You cannot doubt yourself anymore. And you can't let your negative influences hold you back. You have to go for it. Now look at that first page of your notes again. What did you write down? You said you are a successful real estate investor and that you have all the money you need to do any deal that you want to do. You are proud of yourself. Your family is proud of all of your accomplishments and you have more income than you know what to do with every month. You have a solid retirement plan and you are a happy person with plenty of time to play. The only thing stopping you is in your head. And as soon as you can get out of your head and get started, that's when the magic's gonna happen. Anybody have any questions? Ashley, you got questions? Okay, how do you know which bait to use, which strategy to use on which deal? And that's going to come. I mean, I can't tell you that. We've only got like, what, eight minutes left? I can't really go into that. I've got videos. I've got worksheets. I've got this whole world of new knowledge that you are going to absolutely love, and you can start tonight. In fact, tonight's your only opportunity. These deals, all I got to do is change the URL, and they go away. Forever and ever, amen. They're gone. What's another question? Okay, subject to means that I'm taking over the mortgage. Subject to, I'm taking over the house. I am buying the house subject to the mortgage staying in you, the seller's name. And on that first deal, I only asked for three years because I didn't think anybody would give me any more. Now I know that you need 10 or 15 years to actually make it done, actually get it done. comps. Those are the comparable sales for the neighborhood. So if a house in the neighborhood has sold for $100,000, then the two or three houses around it should be worth about $100,000. If they've got newer carpet, newer granite, newer windows, they might be worth a little bit more, but basically they're going to be $100,000. If the comps are coming in at $40,000 and you're looking at a $100,000 house, you might be screwed, <laughs> or at least the seller is. But we can have a plan for that. We can get them out of that situation. I can work with you on that. Any other questions? Any other thoughts? Any other concerns? Anybody in the chat have any other questions? Anything I can help with?
because I want you to live the life that I'm living. You deserve it. The more landlord friends I have, the more fun I can go do. I can have money, have friends with money, and we can go play. Your job isn't going to be holding you back from these vacations anymore. You're going to spend more time with the family. Maybe that's good, maybe that's bad, but you'll have to work that out yourself. This is what you've been waiting on, and this is the opportunity to do it. You have to get in tonight. That's the only choice you have now. So if you have any other questions, later on I'll be hanging out. Um, if you think of something later, that's fine. But what you really need to do is get started. Get started. Take that leap. Let's do this. Let's do this now. And let's start buying houses. Let's start creating that rental income. Let's start that portfolio. Let's get it all done. I'm buying more houses every week, every month. And you're getting further and further behind. So let's get to it. If y'all have any other questions, let me know. And I'll see you in the program.